A key question related to the trial of Jesus is what was he put on trial for? Scholars generally agree that the charge made was that of sedition against the Roman state, but some, as we'll see, go a lot farther in understanding what that means. The first century had its own brand of what we now call terrorists. In Judea, that role was fulfilled by a group called the Zealots. The Zealots were kind of like Al-Qaeda, where Rome was in the political role occupied by America. They used subversive violence to try to overthrow Roman power. What's that got to do with Jesus? Well, actually nothing. The majority of scholars affirm that the Zealots as a group didn't exist in the time of Jesus but came about some 20 to 30 years after his crucifixion. But there is a fringe group that tries to date the Zealots as early as the time of Jesus, and then they try to include him in their ranks. For the remainder of this vid, our primary source of information will be this excellent book by biblical scholar Barton Hengel, titled The Zealots. It's the go-to opening source for anyone who wants to understand the Zealot movement, and why attempts to include Jesus in it are wrong. Okay, so we have someone who has some questions on this. Again, go ahead. Yeah, uh, several of Jesus' disciples were known zealots, so he must have been one too. Yeah, okay, and since several of his disciples were fishermen, that means Jesus was Captain D, right? Don't get smart. The evidence is clear on this one. What about Simon the Zealot? Well, what about him? Here's the thing, folks. The word we translate zealot was the name of that terrorist group later on, true. But before that, it was also a word used to describe anyone who was zealous for religious practice. It was also applied to a disciple of a teacher, and had been used for a long time in the academy to describe the exclusive loyalty that was expected of a student. It may be no surprise that Luke alone, who is a Gentile writer, uses this term for Simon. And by the way, to true zealots in the terrorist sense, any association with tax collectors like Matthew would have seemed like a betrayal. Okay, next up, what you got? Yeah, what about Peter, who was named Simon Bar-Jonah? That sounds a lot like an Aramaic word that meant outlaw. Alright, look. As we know, the Bar prefix means son of. So anyone with a father named Jonah had to withstand that sort of punning indignity. And it's useless to establish some sort of zealot connection. Even so, there's no guarantee that Bar-Jonah means exclusively outlaw. In some later Jewish contexts, it simply means a bad, undisciplined person. It was also used at a very late period. We don't have any evidence it was used that way in Jesus' time. And finally, just for good measure, Peter as Simon son of John is a far better attested reading in the textual tradition than Simon son of Jonah. So that really kills that argument. Okay, what else? Uh, James and John were called sons of thunder. That must mean they got mad a lot, which means they were probably zealots. <laughs> You're not serious. You ever hear a non sequitur? Come on, do better than that. Okay, Judas Iscariot's name comes from a Greek word that means knife. That same word was used to name another terrorist group, so he was probably one too. Alright, well that wouldn't help a lot since Judas was the bad guy. If he betrayed Jesus, then that would suggest that Jesus was not living up to Judas' expectations. Which leads to the idea that Jesus himself was not a zealot. Even so, it's never been satisfactorily resolved whether Iscariot drives from this word, which does mean knife, or from Man of Kerioth, the name of a town in that time. The problem is that this term for a terrorist group is found only in Josephus, who reports the appearance of a new kind of robber in Jerusalem during the reign of Felix, quite some time after Judas killed himself. It doesn't appear any earlier than that. It's also a term with Latin origins, which suggests that it originated with the Romans, not the Jews. So it isn't something Jews like Judas would name themselves. Anything else? Alright, one more. Uh, Jesus equipped his followers with swords because he anticipated trouble, so they must have been zealots. 
Oh, come on now. That passage in Luke refers to only two swords. And those weren't like the long swords of those medieval TV programs. It would have been a Jewish short sword, a dagger used as protection against wild animals and robbers. And needless to say, that wouldn't have been much use against the temple police. Oh, I don't know. Maybe he could have spread some butter with it and made them all die of high cholesterol. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, see you next time.